Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. Throughout the program today, we've been examining how America and the world are likely to have changed when this pandemic has finally stopped its deadly spread and we can return to a semblance of normalcy. And the environment for liberty has certainly been at issue as things we never thought could happen here. Incursions into our individual liberty are happening almost faster than we can keep track of them. But that's why we've got LibertyNation.com's Guardian of Individual Liberty to keep us on the cutting edge of the many threats and promising developments for liberty in COVID world, and more importantly, its aftermath. Here he is, constitutional lawyer in LibertyNation.com, legal affairs editor Scott Cosenza. Hello, Scott. Hello, Tim. Well, a lot of threats. A lot of opportunities in COVID world, post-COVID world. What do you see in the way of opportunities or improvement in the environment for liberty once this uh, pandemic is cleared? Well, I think it's the massive amount of regulations that we have in place, Tim, that do no service to us or humanity or the market or anything else other than protect some narrow interest, which is why they were erected in the first place. And I think we're seeing this all throughout, uh, you know, these various supply chain issues like, I, you know, they, they've got these situations in many cities where uh, they want to reduce traffic in supermarkets and they also want to keep alive small businesses. So they've wanted to allow, for instance, restaurants to be able to sell uh, non-prepared food directly to consumers. So they have got a bundle of oranges. They can sell their oranges. to the, Well, they don't have a grocery license or they don't have this other license or some third right. license. Well, we know that they're subject to clean food rules. They're, they got a health inspection at the restaurant. What's the, what is the, the reason to keep them from selling directly to consumers? Well, the reason is I'm sure that the grocers don't uh, want that to happen. It's probably the reason why the, the law was erected in the first place. So it's these kinds of regulations, Tim, that are erected, I think, most often not for any good reason, not for a health benefit. They have maybe some fig leaf of a benefit, but really what they're about is erecting barriers to competitions in the marketplace. And I hope uh, and see that, that that's an opportunity for increased liberty going forward in a post-COVID world. When these things are proposed, more people may stand up and say, what's the reason for this limiting regulation again? And who does it benefit? And what does it cost? Well, it seems to me, Scott, that things are going to change dramatically for the FDA when this is over, because they're either going to have been lauded because some of the drugs that they didn't allow to come uh, to market uh, were indeed proved to be uh, dangerous. Uh, But they could also uh, be brought low by the fact that several of the drugs that they didn't bring to market worked and saved lives, which don't you think ultimately will force the FDA into streamlining their process for the for the approval of new drugs? Only, Tim, if the American people force them to do it. They waited, Tim, until April, the first <laughs> well into April to relax the standards of foreign made masks N95 masks that hospitals could buy. It's almost like we're not in a crisis at all. It seems like the way that the FDA has been uh, been proceeding. Any more particular opportunities for liberty that you see in the wake of this crisis? Well, we discussed the sort of federal things, too. There are many state and local uh, regulations that I think would be uh, affected as well. You know, we have uh, the certificate of need uh, for any new health care facility uh, can be made in many states. Uh, we're both residents of uh, Virginia, and in Virginia, for instance, you cannot, if you and I decided, let's say we, we won multiple Powerball lotteries and decided to throw up a hospital to benefit our fellow man and woman, we would not be able to do so legally unless we got a special permission slip from the state. Now, I, I want to make this clear, Tim. This is not something that says that we've dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's with respect to cleanliness or following proper procedure. That's not what this is about. This is about the state deciding whether or not the market will be able to handle another hospital. And you might say, well, isn't that up to us or the people who own us? No, it's not. It's up to the state because they've co-opted this decision making from the market. Now, the threats to liberty, and there have been many in this crisis, but when, when the dust settles and the smoke clears, Scott, uh, what new threats to liberty will have 
strengthened well, uh, I think over that, the oh, over the time of this crisis. I think Tim that the biggest threat will come from those who say that it was because of a lack of a centralized response that we have had uh, an aggravation of mortality or other problems uh, and that more centralization is necessary. And that could either be at the national level. We see plenty of actors now who say that various states are fighting against one another for resources and that's untenable. And then also at the broader level for world government uh, to say that, well, if that's true at the national level, why isn't it true at the world level? Um, and I think that uh, it is the enemy of liberty, that centralization, and also probably the enemy of, of good uh, hygiene and public health, the way that China behaved with their, their uh, sort of top-down uh, directive-based society didn't work for getting this information out, and it was less healthy. So uh, I think there's reason for all of us to reject that kind of uh, uh, consequence from this crisis. And really, you know, the people who listen to this kind of show are the ones that have to tell everybody that they know the reasons why uh, individual liberty actually provides for a better outcome. Uh, and also you get the benefit of the liberty to boot. It's like the icing on the cake. Well, we've seen the uh, disconcerting and almost unthinkable specter of the left in all this, which has criticized Donald Trump for being a dictator all along, wanting him to be more of a dictator with more federal power, more federal authority, more federal spending, more federal bills to throw money at the problem. But when you, Scott, when you hear the left talk about how Trump has blown this, how he didn't get testing done soon enough, how he didn't cut off travel from Europe, uh, soon enough. One thing you never hear from them, which you've heard constantly from President Trump during this crisis, is joining the government with private industry to tackle problems like this. But when you hear the left respond, it's as if only the government is there and private industry has little to no role to play in a crisis like this. And not only that, but that the actors in private industry need to be brought to bear at the barrel of a gun. There have been some exceptions like 3M and GM, which had to be sort of induced to step up and kind of do what's called their patriotic duty. But for the most part, what Trump has done, it seems to me, is to employ private industry that specializes in the things that we need in this crisis and let them take the lead as much as possible. While what the left wants predictably, is more government, more spending, more regulations. I don't think that having the federal government as a uh, production partner would aid most firms in producing just about anything. All right. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Tim. This program, Liberty Nation Radio and LibertyNation.com's own podcasts, The Uprising, hosted by Scott and The Rabbit Hole with our own Mark Angelides, Politics and Prose, where past is prologue, all of it available on demand at LibertyNation.com and from fine podcast providers everywhere. So that is it for this week, but we'll be back at you next week, same time, same station. Till then, this is Tim Donner saying stand up for liberty, and for heaven's sake, stay well. We'll see you next time on Liberty Nation Radio.